This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with Violent Gentleman. Um, we're back with a big man, Nick Campbell. How are you, Nick? Good. How you doing? I thanks for having me again. It's nice to speak to you after the debut. And uh, the last time we spoke was the twenty fourth of February. At that stage, you know, you hadn't you hadn't sort of fight news. Obviously, you know, you probably had fight news in the background. You just weren't obviously allowed to say. You know, you your you were supposed to obviously make your Bedell bid. Debut in Belgium, um, but obviously it was of no fault of obviously Mark or the promoters or anything else like that. It was I think it was a British board. Whenever you make you have to make your debut in the UK, is that correct? I believe so. So apparently the right by regulations you need to make your debut on British soil. So Belgium was out the window. But like I say, it was one of them. You know what can you do? That's the rules, and you need to play by them. So we just moved on really. Um, Mark had actually managed to get me on the, uh, had potential to put me on the Lawrence Acoli undercard, which was also mm-hmm. taking place on the same day, the 20th of March. But just with COVID and lack of opponents, really, there's not a lot of guys with active medicals at the moment, mm-hmm. obviously enough, because there aren't as many shows taking place. So a lot of guys are going to wait until we get back to some kind of normality before they, you know, shell out a thousand pounds to pay for a medical when they might not even get a fight. So. I uh, we just struggled to get an opponent in time uh, to get on that, but obviously enough after that had passed, we just kept training and Mark phoned me up and said that I was on the tenth of April, so get ready to go. And I, that was that. What what a place to you know, if, if you'd probably have thought of making your debut, you were probably thinking when the Belgium sort of thing and stuff is going, it's it's going to be off the radar. You know, nobody's really have to tune in pay per view and things like that, but. But they open up the show and on the live broadcast on Sky Sports. Like I, I think when I I put up your ring walk the other day, I sort of said it, it's a memory it won't leave you. No, I mean listen, it was absolutely unbelievable. Thankfully, my dad managed to um, get in to watch, and um, it was just it was incredible. You know how many times you're going to get an opportunity to make your debut on such a big stage? Well, you only get one opportunity to make your mm-hmm. debut and to make it on such a big stage was, that was amazing. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, I felt the pressure. I could feel, you know, a lot of people saying, why is this guy on this show? He shouldn't be allowed on this show, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? That's all yeah. part of it when you're in the public eye. So I just kind of took it all in my stride, soaked it in the whole week, you know. It's pretty surreal. You're just going for breakfast and Eddie Hearn's walking past you. So, I, it was it was some experience, um, one and like you say, one I'll never forget. And although there wasn't crowds or anything there, there I pro- like I say, I probably wouldn't change how it went. I was delighted with the week, the night, you know, everything went as best as it possibly could. So I know no complaints here. And and obviously from seeing Eddie Hearn and obviously on the TV, you know, from watching other shows and things like that, they 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 being around him and. And probably one of very few people sometimes that are actually taller than him as well. So I'm sure he was sort of looking up at you going, where did you come from? I I think that's one of his first questions was, "What are you mad? Like To go from professional rugby, those guys are mad enough to go into professional boxing. Are you crazy? But do you know what? Like Just to be in and around the, you know, the matchroom bubble, and like watching Eddie Hearn work, he's a master at what he does. I mean, I think for the press conference, I was sitting there and I was obviously the first guy on for the press conference with my opponent and he, re- he rattled off about 20 fights that are coming up in the next two months, for like 10 shows that are coming up in the next two months. It mm-hmm. like just went off and I was like, how can he even remember that? I can hardly remember what happened yesterday and he just said 20 fights where they're taking place and... That uh, was I uh, something something to behold. He can speak. It, like can Eddie, happen. Eddie's probably Eddie loves playing the the villain at times. Obviously, we've seen him in Belfast and stuff. You know, he's doing the Frampton Quig presser and things like that. And he always wanted to be booed, but but you can't not respect him. As I say, when you say we can reel reel off what's happening show after show after show, you're going. You know, he's a promoter, but he's a promoter for and a really good promoter at that for a good reason because he knows the fighters. You know, he gets to know everybody. Like I'm sure he probably burnt burnt your ear more than anything um, last week trying to get to know you. No, he's top top man. Um, like I say, I, in my opinion, he's probably the best in the business. So 
it was just you know a real honour to be involved in something like that for your first outing it was that was incredible. It definitely was, and and obviously on your performance, you know, I remember obviously listening to Matthew Macklin and and Johnny Nelson and you know things like that. You always have to listen to what they're saying, and obviously Matthew Macklin was sort of saying that you just didn't stop. You know, you were like, you could see obviously how excited you were to be in there, but you know straight away in your debut and you're throwing in big body punches already. It's it's only nothing nothing you can do but admire that. No, particularly for a heavyweight. I like I say, I've I've been working with great people, you know, down down at the Cronk with Tony and Dan, and you know, I've obviously got my, my manager Matt looking after me, and you know, I've got a great team around me, and all I've done was go out and try and you know do the stuff that I've been working on in training, and put it into the night. Uh, you know, I knew that the guy that I was in against, I was expected to go out there and blast him out. No disrespect to him. Um, but at the same time, you know, people say you can only fight what's put in front of you, but you've still got to go out there and do it. And like I say, with the added pressure of the lights and cam, all cameras' actions, you know what I mean? I, I did feel a bit of pressure. I kind of had it well, but I was feeling the pressure to go out and put in a performance because there'd be nothing worse than going out there and stink the place out. So, I, like I say, I was just happy to go in there, get my shots off, look good doing it, get a job done, and that was it. Yep, and I say it's it's something you'll not forget now. And for a lot of people, whether they were sort of ex rugby player, you know, what are you getting into the sport and things for now? People have to give you the respect. They go, you're actually now a boxer now. So yes, you've had a, a pro rugby career and everything else, but leave that behind now. Your focus is obviously on, on moving forward with boxing in the future. Yeah, I mean, listen, I had a load of me. Like you know what it's like, especially with matchroom, you know putting you on their socials and stuff like that, you, you get a lot of more people following you, a lot more people paying attention to you. And, um, you know, some of the daft comments and daft messages you get sent off, mm -hmm. guys saying, I'll fight you, no problem, blah, blah, blah. Who are you to skip the queue? Boxers have been boxing for years, blah, blah. Like, you know, all this. But people don't take into account. I gave up rugby four years ago at 27. And I immersed myself in amateur boxing and managed to win all the Scottish titles. Went around the world with Scotland, sparred, you know, was in sparring with some of the best amateur boxers about in Britain. Uh, you know, challenged myself against some of the best boys in Britain. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like I say, I mean, you say what you want, but at the end of the day, I, I, I've tried my best to get as much, much experience as possible. I've won all the Scottish titles. I've went and, you know, sparred, held my own against really experienced guys. Yeah. And tried to pick it up. That was my 16th fight in total. I'm still on the upward curve. I've still got loads to learn. I was down sparring today. Had a tough day in sparring today against a good lad. Learned mm -hmm. loads from it. So, like I say, my, my, you know, my first couple of fights aren't going to be anywhere near the level of boys I'm sparring. And I'm learning all the time. Every day is an experience. Every day is a school day. And, like I say, you know, all the all the circus and all the comments and stuff like that, the negative ones just encourage me more to, you know, go out and prove everybody wrong. It's something you've probably been used to with the rugby and stuff as well. You know that you're always going to have people that are fans, but at the same time, sometimes amongst the fans, you're going to get someone that's going to have the negative energy. It's going, uh, you're rubbish, you're this, that, the other. Yeah. It's, it's something, I guess, you have to probably get used to sometimes in boxing is you could go in your first shot, Land an uppercut on someone and spark him out, and they'll call him a, you know, a cabbie or, or something oh, like that. No, you know, he's not a punch bag. I no, nah, listen, like you know, the one, you know, there's a lot of great things about social media, but one of the negative things is that everybody has an opinion and everybody's mm -hmm. entitled to their opinion, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's opinion should count. So you're entitled to your opinion, you're able to voice your opinion, but it doesn't mean I'm going to take it on board. Like I say, I listen to people in my close circle with my best interest at heart and I take on all the negative feedback they give me and try and improve on it. So, But by far from the finished finished article, we're always working and always looking at areas to improve. I'm my own worst critic, so there's literally nothing anybody could say to me that I haven't already said to myself. Yeah. So, like I say, I'm just here to improve and work and see where we can go. And would you have done that in your rugby as well then? Would you have sort of been your own worst critic just but because you can only get better if, if you can sort of critique yourself and go, and, I know it wasn't my best, I can be better. And that obviously helps you helps you improve rapidly because, you know, I think you'd say it afterwards, it's, you're learning more and more every day as you go. And probably from last year to this year, the improvements you made. 
ah, listen, you're only kidding yourself if you're not honest with yourself. I know what I need to work on, and I know the areas that I need to develop and improve on. So, I, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes you've got to get, like, you know, everybody has a bad day at the office. Everybody has off days. Everybody has great days. Don't get too carried away with them. But as long as I know myself, my team around me are working with me every day to, you know, feed in the information I need to, feed in the points that I need to learn from, and we'll just take it from there. And and obviously for anybody that's asking questions why you're getting the opportunities, I think sometimes they, they don't remember who don't they, they probably forget who your manager is. It's the magic man Mark and Lobb. So it's it's all down to obviously the good work that he's doing, obviously torture Nelly that's getting getting you these opportunities. No, listen, like Mark's got a great working relationship with most of the promoters out there. Obviously what's very close with Mark's room and Eddie Hearn. And um like I say, you've got to take your hat off to him because, you know, who would have thought that I would be fighting my debut on a matchroom card and he managed to do that. So, you know, massive thank you to Eddie Hearn, obviously, for giving me the opportunity. But, you know, big thank you to Mark as well for putting a bit of faith in me, mm -hmm. uh, bringing me on as best he can and getting me out there and putting me on the best, you know, pedestal he possibly can, the best, you know, shop window to sell yourself. So... Nah, he's, and Matt, I know it's easy for me, maybe I'm biased, but I think he's one of the best managers out there. And there's a lot of, you know, different characters in the game, but Mark's genuinely just got your best interest at heart, so you can't fault him. We're going to have to trademark this magic man um, thing so that other people can't steal it. He's probably going to be sending me a text and saying, stop bumming me up on, on social media. I'll have oh, 10 phone calls that. of... He, he hates it. Like, whenever I've mentioned it, like, you know, thanks to such and such and such, he's like, don't thank me. I don't want to thank. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's actually, he's not, he doesn't want his name to be, uh, do you know what I mean? He doesn't want it to be thanked. So, mm -hmm. no, nah, but honestly, th thank you to him. It was it was quite good, actually. We had a wee interview with the IFL TV boy, Coogan Cassius, after yep. the fight. And um, it was good. He got everybody in dead. Uh, Tony and Mark, Dan, Dan's a man of few words, so you never had anything to say, but Tony and Dan both said a wee bit, and then it was it was good, it was good, you know, just to recognise everybody in the team that's been working towards a common goal, so it was nice that we, everybody could get recognised. I wouldn't want him in every interview with me, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you need your own spotlight as well. Um, and obviously now, the, you know, the plan, I guess, is obviously to stay active and, and fight as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, like you, you were talking to me a bit earlier about the Johnny Nelson comments and stuff like that, and he's not wrong, do you know what I mean? He's, Johnny's been in and around the game, and, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Johnny Nelson. I think he's a very, very knowledgeable guy when it comes to the sport of boxing, and everything he said was bang on, really, you know, trying about as often as possible, fighting every month if you can, and if not, getting the top quality sparring. So, we'll just take that, you know, we'll take that on board and, like I say, that's Mark's plan anyway, and that was my plan, was to try and be as active and doing as much as we possibly can. So I, I get, I, I'm aiming to have five five fights this year, hopefully. So that would be a mate. You know, it's not every month, but unfortunately due to COVID, it's probably not possible to go every month. But if I can get yeah, five yeah. fights and along with sparring and, you know, the training environments and stuff, that would be fantastic. Definitely would. And, and sort of touching on, on some of the, the rest of the stable, obviously it was confirmed last night that James Hennison's going to be fighting for the IBO lightweight title. Um, sort of coming back and sort of living a dream and getting himself up under the glamour nights. He's obviously challenged challenged Heaven Farmer and stuff before, but yeah, D James is obviously back in what, just over two weeks time again. Um, you've told me obviously still to be announced for the 15th of May, defend his EBU title. And you've obviously stable mate Eric Donovan on the 14th of May, um, fighting for the, the European Union uh, Super Featherweight title. So, but busy, obviously, times coming up for, for yourselves in the stable and probably will not be too long before, hopefully, you're going to get in the fight for a title of some sort. Listen, like, titles and all that are amazing. You know, that's why we get into the game. But just now, I'm just trying to learn as much as possible. That's a long end term or end phase goal. Um, obviously enough that's something you aspire to but just now it's just about learning, looking at what the other lads are doing in my stable and how they're preparing themselves for these title shots and just getting as much experience as I can it's fantastic, James has been given the opportunity to fight for the IBO 
Uh, a lot of people kind of slag the IBO belt, but they don't, you know, take into account Chris Eubank Jr. won that. Anthony Joshua's got pictures of the IBO belt in his collection. Golovkin actually won the IBO belt as his first world title. Mm-hmm. So it's not to be sniffed at. It's a world championship belt. And like I say, he's one of the most unassuming guys you'll ever meet in your life, James. He's genuinely down to earth. You know, what you see is what you get with him. And I, in the short time that I've, like had the pleasure of training alongside him and knowing him. I'm delighted that he's getting the opportunity to fight for it. Tommy's got a good t- handy defence coming up as well, so hopefully we'll go out and put in a decent performance when that comes. And Eric as well, Eric's, you know, genuine, real genuine, lovely guy and a hell of a boxer. Um, you know, he's, the amateur experience he had came at the professional game late, but It'd be amazing to see the three of them going out and putting in good performances, all coming home with those belts. So I am just buzzing for the whole stable. And like I say, I hope they all smash it because they're all cracking fellas. Tommy's a cracking guy as well. I have some laugh with Tommy. <laughs> um, he's a good he's a, he's a a good guy. So no, it'd be, it'd be brilliant if all three of them could go out and get the job done and bring the belts back. And obviously with them all fighting within, what, two weeks of each other, I think, you know, the, the sort of plan is hopefully by the end of the year, there would be a big match him show back in Belfast. I'm, I'm not sure if you've ever been in the SSE arena before, but, but that place full to the rafters is probably probably one of the best atmospheres you can probably find in boxing. So who knows, right. the end of the year, you could sort of have that to tick off your list. Well, I've been at the SEC arena in Glasgow, and I know that the people in Glasgow and the people in Belfast are very similar in nature and in attitude. So I have no doubt that the atmosphere would be absolutely electric. And uh, my experience that would be incredible. Um, obviously, as well, hopefully by the time that thing's happening, a lot of the f- you know supporters that's only a hop across the pond, hopefully I can bring a couple of hundred Scotsmen over to add that into the mix and make it truly mental. So <laughs> aye, that would be good. The SSE Arena will be, be rubbing their hands because I know the, the Scottish like to drink as much as the Irish, so they'll definitely make for a good weekend. Aye, well... That's one thing I we've got in common is definitely they all, they all let us swally. So <laughs> definitely sure. do. And I know we've obviously spent a spent a few days obviously in Belfast. You know since obviously you're announced. How have you been finding sort of you know I know you've played rugby and stuff over here before, but how do you sort of find you know congregating about Belfast? Did do people notice who you are yet, or are you still able to sort of? Uh, nah, like not not really. No, I mean actually from the shot you know the we spells I've had. I've I know a couple of people in Belfast. I've got I actually got an auntie w- that lives here and my cousins at Queen's University studying to be a doctor. So when I've been over I've, you know, caught up with them and a couple of lads that I used to play rugby with also live in Belfast that are back playing for Ulster and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's been good to catch up with everybody and you know obviously due to the lockdown and stuff they nothing was really open. So hopefully Going forward, when I'm back and forward from Jersey, I'll get to see more of what Belfast is actually like and get out and about with the lads and get to experience a bit of the culture. Because, mm-hmm. like I say, I, I, I feel that the Scots and the Irish are very similar. And um, I'm sure I'll get on fine with everybody. It definitely will. And I say it's, you know, I guess the, the strange thing is if somebody could stop you in the street and ask you for your autograph, but they might remember you as a, as a rugby player rather than a boxer. And you'd be sort of going, where do you know me from? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was saying to Mark the other day, I thought he'd stitched me up, but when I, I was out of a, out a run, it was, um, it must have been three or four days ago, I was out a wee run, and um, I was running past the co-op, and um, this lad was like, go on, champ, and I was like, oh, cheers, mate, and I was like, I came back to the house, and I went, this guy was shouting, the old guy, with a cap on, and like, does he work down at the building site or something, he goes, I have no idea who it was, so... <laughs> I've had one guy shouting, come on, Jack, maybe he's seen me fighting on the TV, I don't know. So, I, I guess at that size, what? he knows you're either a rugby player or a boxer, so he could probably... <laughs> maybe, maybe he was just shouting at me because I looked like I was struggling, I don't know. But I <laughs> thank you for the support anyway, mate, if you're listening. <laughs> Definitely. But Nick, listen, it's always been lovely getting the catch-up again. It's, you know, it's just less than two months since our last catch-up. I'm sure you're probably fed, fed up near to the back teeth sometimes. You've probably had to do so many interviews, but I guess... You know, it's the only way you get yourself out there and get the spotlight on yourself. Ah, listen, it's part of the sport. I was, you know, kind of talking to Mark earlier on the phone and he was saying to me that, 
you know, that's it now, big man. You need to calm down with all the interviews you don't want. And I agree with him, you know. Mm -hmm. If it was up to me, I wouldn't really do much interviews. I'm not a big fan of getting on and speaking. And da -da -da. Do you know what I mean? I feel as if you go over all the same things. Yeah. But it's guys like yourself that help us boxers, you know, get bums on seats, get people interested and sell tickets. And, you know, from that point of view, it's fantastic. And can't thank guys like yourself enough for giving us that spotlight and giving us that wee bit of exposure that we need to try and sell ourselves in the fight game. I must throw you up fiver in the post. That's it. No, don't worry. I think I need to send you a fiver. <laughs> Not at all. But listen, it's been good, obviously, getting the catch up. Um, obviously, um, you, you obviously keep doing as you keep doing with your sparring and things like that. And, and hopefully it's not long before we get you back in the ring and get another another famous ring walk going. Hopefully not, no. Hopefully not. Another famous ring walk. Maybe a different tune this time. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Watch this Definitely. space. But listen, it's good to get the catch up and we'll speak to you again soon, Mick. Pleasure. As always, thank you.